This is the first row F bag sort video. So we're going to open this up and see what we got going on here. We have cornerstone and lattices, which I'll set aside. F7 through 13 will be covered in the second bag um, bag sort video. And then I've got two four and a half inch squares and F1 to F6. So we're going to do the F1 to F6 bag right now, and I'll set the 7 to 13 aside for later. These squares are going to be for F5 and F13. So I'm going to write that on my on my block and F5, which is going to go with this bot, this bag, and F13, which obviously will go with the second bag. Next thing I do is look for the modified blocks, and my modified blocks are F5. I'm going to mark that in my book, F10, F11, and F12. So I mark, I'm going to make a notation in my book about that. So I'm going to get out my book, and I'm going to turn to the page with F1. So here's F1, and we are going to work from the book. There's only, I think, one block that's modified in this bag, so most of these are going to be from the book. So let's dump out my bag and see what I got for pieces here. And we're looking for triangles, these shapes, this triangle. This is going to be applique on, and these are going to be right hand, left hand. So I will work on sorting all these and as I pile them I'm going to pile them in similar shapes so that I'm going to have easier time finding the shapes I need later. So I've got my big triangles. This is the fourth one. I've got these diamonds. There's only one set of diamonds in this bag. This one is a little bit different shaped but because they're all the same, it's not going to matter that they don't match the book exactly, but they match each other exactly, so it's not going to look like it's wrong. So I'm going to set these up here just so that they're here but not there, if that makes any sense. And so then I've got these pieces, and I'm going to do those, flip one the one way, flip one the other way, and I've got eight of these little pie pieces here. These are a bit larger than, you see how that there's a line there? These are a bit larger than the book. That's okay because the triangles by comparison are a bit smaller. So it works out that it's the same size block. So, and the angle's different, as you can see. So the, that's okay. Because there's only eight triangles that come anywhere close to this shape. So they have to be for this block, and then this shape fits in there, and that fits for this whole piece. So I will put these where they need to go. All my pieces are laid out, and now I'm going to label each one F1. So I've got my pieces all labeled, and now I'm going to mark my focus fabrics. Let me move my thing here. The diamonds are going to be all focus fabric, and every other one of the center triangles. So pick one and start there, and then every other one is going to be focus fabric and the opposite piece above it. So this is focus fabric, so that's background. So this is background, so this is focus fabric, and then it's every other one. So make sure that this doesn't match fabrics. So I've got one, two, three, four of those, one, two, three, four of those, and these are background with the focus fabric diamonds on it. Um, if you have a directional fabric, now's the time to decide how you want to 
feature it. You can make it go one way or you can radiate from the center or however you want to do it. I always mark my directional with a pen of a different kind so that I know that it's a notation rather than a label. I'm going to put these in a baggie marked F1 and then I can move on to the next block. Next is F2, and F2 has got these kite shapes in the center, um, and when I was sorting, I happened to set these aside, and so I've got eight of those. They are a little bit different than the book, but they'll match up just fine. The trick is these triangles. You've got corner triangles here that are the normal type of triangles we're used to dealing with. And I think there's only four available of that size. And that would be this. But let me verify that these are all the same size. So, yeah, they are the same size. So, these are going to be my corners. And then I've got my kites. But then I've got these, these triangles. And these triangles... There should be 16, and I've got this pile of little bitties here. And so I've got half square triangles that obviously I don't need for this block, but I have this guy. And there's two angles here. All three of these angles on this triangle are different. So if you put it on, if you flip it, it's not going to fit right. So if I flip this and put this here, That's what I'm going to get right there. And then if I flip it the other way, that's what I'm going to get right there. So you have what looks like almost a right angle. That's going to be on the kite itself, not on the half square triangle in the corner. So if I lay this like here, that means that this is going to go on the kite here. So that's going to be like this. And again, this is not going to be exact with this angle. See that's how it's not quite there? But if we look at the kite next to it, it's not quite, it goes over that line higher. So it fits this space just fine between the two pieces. But it's not exact to the book because the math is a little different when they go to make the paper pieces. So the block is still, it does not affect the integrity of the block. But just make sure that this right angled piece is on the kite side, not on the, the triangle side. And so that then goes in like so, like that. So let me get these all laid out. I've got all of my pieces laid out. And now I'm going to go around and mark them. These little tiny pieces are a bit difficult to label, so I usually use my stiletto to hold them down while I label them. My pieces are labeled F2, and now I'm going to mark my focus fabric. Every other center kite is going to be focus fabric, so I'm going to mark those. And then the ones that are not, the, one, the, the kites that are background are going to have triangles that are focus fabric. So I'm going to mark the tr little triangles above that. So I've got this one and that one. And then these two. And I should have eight triangles, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and four kites. And the corner triangles are background. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to decide how you want to handle that. Um, when I had a focus or fabric that was directional for this block, I radiated from the center. You can also make it the same direction if you wish. I'm going to put this in a bag with my label of F2 and move on to the next one. F3 is our next block, and it is the snowball. So you've got the... Um, octagon and triangles for the corners which I think are in my little triangle pile and this is going to be interesting but so these are a little bigger so let me see what we got from a triangle standpoint but before I go into the rectangles and all that 
because I think those are here. Yeah, okay. Before I go into that, I've made this block before and I had a heck of a time because I had this octagon and I could not figure out why it doesn't fit. I mean, for the life of me, it doesn't fit. I've turned it all that sorts of ways. What I didn't realize at the time is when you, when you see an octagon, you want to turn it in quarter turns, but you can also turn it in eighths. So if you have it this way, there's, there's two lengths of sides. There's the short sides and the long sides. The long sides go here. So actually it goes like this and it fits perfectly. But when I was doing this before, I had a fit because I could not figure out how to make it fit. So rotate it. And then I have little arrows here and I put little arrows on the paper piece itself so that when I went to actually assemble the block, that was pointing to my rectangles and matched my notation in the book. So that way when I did my block assembly, I didn't try to screw it up or I didn't accidentally screw it up. Um, where'd that triangle go? So, yeah. I'm going to match my triangles up, though, and um, find my pieces. I've sorted my triangles, and there are four that are the larger of the many that are going to go here. There's no question about that. There are 24 of this size, and there are four that are slightly larger. It's, it's a close size but it's kind of obvious at the same time so there's a good there's a good bit of difference here for that triangle but there's four that are larger and the larger ones are going to go off to the side somewhere so um, they are kind of close when you try to put them in the book so make sure that you take these four and set them aside from this block the other 24 you only need um, eight of this so we're going to take eight of these and stick them in the corners and then place the rest of these. Got my F3 pieces all laid out and now it's time to label them. All my pieces are labeled and now I'm going to mark my focus fabric which is pretty easy in this case. The snowball in the center is the focus fabric and the arrows or the triangles that are pointing towards the snowball are the focus fabric in this block. Everything else is background. So I will label a piece of paper and stick it in my sandwich baggie with my F3 pieces and move on to the next one. Next is F4. Um, F4 is going to have a center square, four rectangles, and some triangles. The big triangles, are there's no other options. There's four big triangles in the bag at this point, and those are going to be for this block. The corner triangles, I'm going to start with my four that are a little larger, and it looks like they're too large for this, so the corner triangles are going to come out of my big pile of originally 24. At this point, it should be 16, or wherever my math is at that point. So I've got four of those, and the rectangles. So the rectangles are the only option are here. And then the squares, I will make sure that the squares are the right size. So I looked at the squares for this block, and so I've got this rectangle here. And when I'm looking at in the rectangle, the rectangle if you look very carefully, it goes over the lines, the black lines. I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's the rectangle itself is a little larger right here. It goes over the black lines very slightly. That's kind of critical because there are nine squares and one of them, there's, there's nine squares that are all the same size and then one of them is slightly larger. It is kind of obvious, but it's the slightly larger one that is for this block. So 
And the reason I know that is because I take the rectangle and match it up to the square because that's essentially what's going to happen. If you take one of these squares, it's going to fit because it fits in the hole, but it's not the right square for this block. You want to make sure you take the square that is bigger than the other eight for this block. So I will go ahead and lay all these pieces out. So the square that's the bigger one of the nine is the square for here, and the square is bigger than the lines. The rectangle is bigger than the lines, but the triangle here that we've picked fits. And because the triangle fits, it's wrong. And I know that's counterintuitive, but if you go and check, you know how I checked the square to the rectangle? So if I check the rectangle to the triangle, because essentially you're putting these pieces together and you're making your block from just these pieces. It doesn't matter what lines are on the paper because the paper, the, the, the book is not going to be in the block. These are the block. So they have to match to each other. So the triangle is too small for the rectangle. So the other four triangles that you have that are larger are really the triangles for this block. So when I take one of the larger triangles, it matches exactly the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to make sure that I take these smaller ones out of the way so I don't mix them up. And I can then have them on my rectangles. So then I have, um, then I have my proper pieces that fit and I'd be able to lay them out properly. So the triangles are actually going to be larger than the lines also. So this is going to be what you have. If I put the point here, it's going to be a little larger. So I'm going to put that there and then the rectangle is going to fit into there. So now I got my pieces all laid out and they fit in the block just fine. And I'm going to label them F4. So I've got my pieces labeled and now I'm going to mark my focus fabrics. The center square and the outer triangles are going to be the focus fabric in this case. And you're also going to have the corner triangles as well, which I apparently missed labeling one of them. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to label the, uh, indicate the direction you want it to lay so that it's not so difficult when you do your block prep. I will put this in a baggie and move on to the next block. F5 is the next block, and this is the modified block that we're going to have. So I'm going to go to the booklet here, and this is the F5 block we're going to work from. This is going to start with the one of the four and a half inch squares. So this is going to be your background or the back. Actually, it's going to be focus fabric is what it's going to be. So that's the back piece. And then for the center, obviously, you've got this guy and um, four of these little footballs. There's two sizes, I believe, of footballs, the larger and the smaller. And they're pretty obvious. I believe it's the bigger of the two, but let's find out. Yep, it's the bigger of the two that go in this one. And then you've got four squares. There's eight squares left of the same size. So there's going to be four of those that go here. And I'll get these laid out as well. So I've got my pieces laid out and now it's time to label them F5. So now I've got my pieces all labeled and I need to mark my focus fabric. As I stated at the beginning, the back, the four and a half inch square is focus fabric. And then this centerpiece shape is focus fabric and the rest of them are background. I will put these in my baggie. If you need to mark directional to do it now and move on to the last block of this bag. F6 is the last block in this bag and there's a lot of pieces left over. So we've got four smaller squares, five larger squares, 
four tiny footballs and a bunch of triangles. So it's kind of self-explanatory. The smaller squares are going to go in the, on, the, on point in the corners with triangles surrounding them. Kind of obvious. The five larger squares are going to be these four plus this one. This one is a square that you're going to applique the footballs onto. So when, you come, when it comes down to it, there's a placement thing and you squish them on and all that, all that fun stuff. And it's worth the effort because it really turns out to be a fun block. But um, this is the background here. I'm going to put the little footballs over on this side. So I have them here and I can mark them for focus fabric and stuff like that when we get there. So I will get these pieces all laid out as they're supposed to be. My F6 pieces are all laid out and now it's a matter of labeling those. All my pieces are labeled. Now it's time to indicate focus fabric. Focus fabric is going to be the center square here is the background of the footballs. So this is focus fabric and the little triangles surrounding the on point squares are also focus fabric. If you have a directional fabric, it's very critical that you label this particular block because trying to fight it and, and find it out after you've thrown it in a baggie and reorganize it is not going to be fun. So make sure you label that as well. And with this indication of the focus fabric, this will conclude the row F bag one bag sort video.